Good morning, everybody. Hope you're having a great day. Well, yesterday, somebody sent me this video of Dave Ramsey talking about the housing market was not going to crash. And they asked me my opinion, and I told them. We said they are not going to tank because there is a pool of buyers that is much larger than the pool of sellers still, and the supply-demand curve will maintain the prices. So let's get to it. Let's talk about this. Let's have a conversation. Comment down below what you think, and we'll see who's right, because I ain't scared my house is paid for. Let's get to it. First, I want to say I owe just about every piece of my financial success and prosperity to Dave Ramsey, okay? I started watching him when I was very young and I saved my money and I had done all the baby steps. By the time, you know, I was 30, let's just say, I had saved up the amount of money for my house. I had saved up and paid cash for my brand new truck. I had put my money in the away for an emergency fund and I was ready to take on the world. So I am a full believer that what he says can work. And in this video, I want to talk about what he's trying to say, what he's saying, and what the data says. So let's run down the numbers. So if you've been following these videos for the last seven or eight, I've been talking about my opinion on what the real estate market is going to do here in 2022, 2023. And I put all the data in these videos. I've talked at length on the Airbnb model, the home builders liquidating everything, the mortgage rates going up, uh, applications for home loans going down. In this video, I'm going to talk about it. And is Dave Ramsey right or wrong? Well, we'll see in this video. I'm going to give you my opinions, unfiltered and full jack version, okay? And as a real estate agent that's doing deals, always uh, talking to people about what the market's like, talking to other agents, talking to bankers, talking to home inspectors and contractors, what they think and what they're seeing. I'm gonna put it out there in this video because I got my cup of coffee and I'm dangerous when I got my cup of coffee because it's cheap Folgers. But the, it seems to be that we're gonna be in the five to 7% by year end. That prediction was made by other people, but the data that we had seemed to support it and we went with that and it looks like that's gonna be about true. In 2023, we said it's gonna return to normal price increases in homes of two to five percent and the data is still indicating that that's what's going to happen number one we've got cpi through the roof 8.4 percent i believe it was in the last richter scale and uh, we know that the fed is going to raise rates again we know it's going to be at least 0.75 because if they don't everybody will freak out and inflation will keep going up if they do a 0.5 so i think they're going to do 0.75 and another 0.75 next month or at the next meeting and then they're going to do it again at least 0.5 i think they're going to do another 0.75 to just go ahead and max pain us out and we know they're going to keep it interest rates up until we see two percent inflation papa pal has said that over and over and over so what does that mean max pain probably middle, middle to next year and remember that real estate numbers lag behind tremendously and in this video he talks about uh, interest rates up, going up, down, up, down. And I just want to go ahead and make that point that interest rates, the Fed has said what they're trying to do, and it looks like it's going to be a long process. I told you I've personally seen mortgage lenders laying off half their office. It happened in one of my deals in the last two weeks. Laid off the entire office. Just all of a sudden, the mortgage lender was no longer there or the underwriter, and we had to start all over again. Almost lost the deal for us. We know we're seeing 20 to 24% cancellations of contracts, which is mind-blowing. In those areas, California, New York, um, Seattle, Portland, have not seen decreases in real estate values. Uh, that was about two months ago, three months ago. Uh, reports are coming out right now. We're seeing home mortgage applications for new builds down 18%. I personally have shown you emails from builders trying to liquidate inventory, letting people buy down points to crazy levels because they have their own uh, mortgage companies. We're seeing title companies change their marketing and preparation for a downturn. We're seeing Zillow, Redfin, all these people laying, uh, all these companies laying people off at a crazy rate. Redfin is saying home buyer demand is down 31%. That That's a number there. If you live in Florida, the price to own a home is going through the roof with insurance. 
All my neighbors are experiencing extremely high insurance premiums going up, changing their monthly payment from escrow like that. I mean, some of these, some of these houses here in Florida, and not even close to the water, just an older home, are going from what was $1,500 a year in a premium are going to $5,000 and $6,000 a year. The cost of ownership is going up. The cost of maintaining is going up. What a lot of people aren't seeing that when you go to buy a new refrigerator, a new hot water heater, a new, wa new flooring, piping. Uh, let me tell you, I I've been buying pipe and it is expensive. You're seeing 30% increases on that stuff. Romex, wires, just the wires in your house is going up. If you want to run, a, if you need to upgrade your electrical box or you can do any of these things, the insurance for the contractor is going up. Your lawyer is going up. Everything is going up. The, 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 the cost on a home is going up. But yet, interest rates are going up. The ability to get cheaper money to purchase that property, that is getting more expensive. And the whole idea of the Fed trying to do what they're doing is to drive down demand. So Dave said, this is a supply and demand issue. Well, the Fed just put a hole in that argument with raising interest rates. Here on the Gulf Coast, we had a severe supply problem and we were seeing a mass migration. Well, now it is dry, dried up because people are just staying put and saying, you know what, I'm, uh, I'm gonna wait, okay? And they're like, I'm gonna wait this out or I, I can't afford the house I want because my payment has gone up. Because most people, when they go to buy a house, they think of only the payment. How much is my payment? And since the, the, the interest has gone up so much, what used to would get you a $500,000 house is probably getting you a $350,000 house. In some parts of the country, you can't even find anything that's really livable uh, below $200,000. So if you're in that category, buying a house is kind of off the table because it's not livable, you know, or it's a lot of work. Um, and some people aren't able to do, to do that or they don't have the funds to one, close, because interest is a lot higher on those properties that are not maintained properly. They don't have the money to fix the hot water heater, the roof, the plumbing, whatever, to get in the house, because as Dave would say, mortgage broker will make you broker if you're not prepared to take on that, um, and you don't have the emergency fund, the savings to fix those issues and get over those hurdles. The cost of getting into a property once, and, and this has happened to me, a, a, you get to the closing table and we find out insurance is twice what we thought it was going to be. Now he's not capable of closing the loan because the underwriter says, hey, uh, ooh, you, uh, you're getting a little too low on that bank account there. I don't think you can afford this house anymore because of the insurance premium. And that's a, that's a thing. We're going to see what they'll ensure change in the state of Florida. The building code is going to change. Uh, that four point is going to change. We might see a fifth point with electric cars now. Like there's so much going on that is going to affect the cost and price and supply and demand of a house. So we're seeing the medium sales price go down. And as like, as a personally, as doing deals, the last three deals I've done have been considerably below ask. Okay. And these are on good homes. Like... $500,000 to $1 million dollar homes that we went under and got the deal. And in some of these deals, we asked for a roof and we got it. And these roofs were $30,000. Okay, so think about that. The comps are starting to come down. The new builders that were, you know, basically waiting you out to cancel the contract, to raise the price and try to sell it again, are now bringing those prices down 15, 20%, like $20,000 off on some of these properties to liquidate them. They're allowing you to buy down points. They're, allow they're throwing in closing costs. They're doing all these things and these comps are coming down, 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 down. And when you factor that in, the price of these houses are going down. If you look at the Case and Schiller report, the price of them are going down. Like this is data. This and they referred to data. Well, his sidekick referred to the data says interest rates were super low. Are cheering for themselves, but those that want to get into a house, it's not too late for you either because no. the competition has slowed down. Well, here's what happened. Prices have no, we had we had this huge. And then he contradicted himself, saying that the demand was going down. I have a ton of respect for Dave Ramsey, but I think right here, his team, his research team failed him on this one. Set him up for failure because 
the data that data just isn't true or it's lagging behind like i've said real estate data is months behind and sometimes you can get caught up in not knowing what the real facts are as somebody that's doing deals sitting in the real estate meetings talking to some of the best agents on the gulf coast this part of the state of florida i know that everything just doesn't feel right things are uneasy like some agents that are really successful are having zero showings. They're calling and asking, hey, like, have you had any traffic? You know, like, what's going on here? Everything is pointing to we're going to see some downside. You just can't tell me that the odds of seeing 10% in interest rates is not going to slow down the housing market. I mean, like, we're seeing like at least 7.5% 7, 7 interest rates with really good credit. With 600 credit scores, you're in the eights. We used to make a joke that, we, not a joke, but we used to say a 10% interest rate can't be caught, okay? That the odds of foreclosure, like let's say you're given a hard money loan, go up exponentially when you hit the 10% mark. And that, is a, that, is, that, that, that could be the future of a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. With the fact of being in recession, the fact of foreclosures, the facts of Airbnb models could collapse, the facts that we could see a lot less spending, the ability to have disposable income in America, inflation rate highest, like, highest in 40 years. It's mind-boggling how fast inflation is going up. It's untamed. Politicians have no idea how to tame it. This is just the perfect storm to say, yeah, homes are are unaffordable and they are going to come down how much will that still be determined it's not going to be five percent it's not going to be ten percent it's going to be enough to stop this whole inflation the fed has said it like they came out and said this is going to happen they're outside the realm of what the president or congress wants they've got to stop inflation they've got to take care of the money supply and that means putting the hammer down stopping demand that's what this means. I want to shift gears here. I've put in a fact that Moody's, Fitch, Goldman Sachs all say in 5 to 10 to 15 to 20 more if we're going into a recession. I've put these articles out there. I've said this is the data. Now, what is Dave trying to say? Okay, and I, and I don't want any, if you've made it this far in the video, I want it to be known. What is he trying to say? Okay. And a lot of people get Dave Ramsey's advice uh, kind of muddled, if that's where, kind of, they kind of confuse his advice, okay? Dave is looking at this as a long-term portfolio, and he is willing to play the long-term. Now, what is he saying? He is saying, statistically, that a, a person's home is like a, their savings account. It is their equity. Most millionaire next doors portfolio, the equity in their home is one of the largest parts of their net worth. And that versus renting and just lighting it on fire with rents going up every year where the rent money is completely wasted, over here it's paying down a mortgage. And if you follow his, his steps, then you're not going to have a 30-year mortgage. You're going to pay it off as soon as you possibly can. And that since there are things in life that you must have to survive, like food, shelter, things like that, I believe, and this is why, the way I did, that there was a few things I needed in life. I needed a house to live in, keep me warm, have my family safe and secure, and I needed a car. And I bought those two things. I paid them off as fast as I possibly could. And it worked out well for me. He's also saying that, hey, real estate has been a really great inflation hedge over the years, which is proved to be true, okay? If you're, if you're planning to stay there a long time, which most people only stay in a house, I think the average lifespan of a mortgage is like 10 years. If you're only staying there, if you're staying there for less than that, and you're not willing to hold this property, the amount of time that you could refi it if it does come back down in a year or two, then you've walked yourself into your answer, okay? For, for me, the greatest creator for me of wealth was holding real estate. And I liquidated my properties 
during this this run. But I kept my home, right? And my home appreciated astronomically. And I did a lot of sweat equity to make it what it is today. And I bought my house at a much higher interest rate. I actually paid almost 5%, it was like 4.75, but I paid it off fast. Some people would say, put 50% down, get over that hump of playing, paying interest versus principal. Dave would say do that. There's a formula in growing your wealth. I call it the peace of mind formula. It is your peace, what is your peace of mind worth versus your return on whatever, right? And a lot of people, and Dave says this, if you really watch a lot of his videos, the delta, the risk factor of not paying off your house versus investing. If you followed, uh, if you didn't follow his method, and you put that money in the stock market thinking you're gonna get another 3% versus paying down your, your home, then if you look at the stock market, you're down 25% year to date. 20 to 25, it's fluctuating like, like a pinball, okay? If you didn't factor in the delta, the risk factor, uh, <laughs> you got burned. You should have took the real return of paying off your house. And if you think about that, uh, and you're holding it for a long period or you're never planning on selling, I believe that looking at the price, as long as it's not severely overpaying, like he says, when you look at something on a 40 year scale, 30 year scale, it doesn't matter, right? Because the time factor of whether you're gonna get that great location you're looking at right now, are your kids at school age, which they'll only be for a few year window, and you need them to go to that school. If the taxes are good in that area and that school system is good versus <laughs> renting and not getting what you want and not going to the school system you want, these are all things you gotta, you gotta analyze. So it all depends. The answer is it depends, right? What is What affects you, yourself, and your plan in life? Like I've got a lot of clients that are moving here and it's their last move in life. They uh, have, you know, they might be getting a mortgage, but they know they're going to sell their house and pay it off quick. Uh, and, you know, they're only going to be paying uh, a mortgage for a small amount of time or it's that dream house and it doesn't matter. You know, there's a lot of situations where it, 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 it depends. Because as the cost of money goes up and the price goes down, you're starting to equal yourself back out. There's always this. You negotiate into the property. You can negotiate. At a certain price, anything becomes effective, right? Anything becomes a bargain at a certain price. Everything has its price. And you might not like it at 800, but you like it at 750. Why not out for 750? Or you don't like it at 800, but you get them to throw in a roof, or uh, you get them to pay closing costs or uh, fix the pool, or closing costs and that cool pinball machine in the corner. You know, like there, there's a lot of ways to make a deal good, and you got that's that's good, having a good agent, and that's something you gotta figure out when you hire an agent. Are they capable of that? Interview them really well. Are they able to network that in? So now, if Dave is right. Let's say if, if he is right and the Fed reverses, we don't go up with interest rates more than a point or point and a half. Because a point, 1% means 10% uh, property value fluctuation in theory. Okay, if we go up 1.5, do the math. So let's say the Fed reverses. Okay, they put politicians run scared come election season and they reverse. I'm talking for the presidential election and they reverse then houses are gonna get more expensive. Inflation is bad. We're not fighting inflation anymore. We said it's just gonna run its course, which it won't. Houses are gonna go through the roof and they're gonna be super expensive. And they're gonna be unattainable for some people. That's what we know. That's why people were buying in the beginning was an inflation hedge. All the rich people said, buy assets, buy assets, buy assets. As we've seen the pinnacle, some of these rich people are gonna start saying, get rid of them, get rid of them, get rid of them. Or we have a recession, People lose their jobs, some come back on the market. Insurance, get the cost of ownership gets too expensive, they come back on the market. Demand dries up because it's too expensive for people. There's a lot of depends here. So will we see 2008 if something breaks? If 
the mortgage market breaks, if we see something overseas, you know, the Bank of England collapse and it affects our banking system here, if we see home builders go under, like Lennar, DR Horton, or Adams Homes, we start seeing these guys collapse, or we see the, their bank notes, their notes on these proper on these large builds start to collapse. Like let's say they get hung up in the middle and they can't finish. And we start seeing them go under. And then we see a bank collapse because they didn't expect this. They over leveraged like 2008. Or the way they were packaged. Like let's say uh, car loans are packaged into something. And the car loan market collapses. And we see something weird. What I'm trying to paint, I paint a picture of something weird happening and we see a crash in or a collapse in one of those markets. We might see a 2008. We don't know. Now you got to define what is a crash. 30%? What are we crash? What was a crash? 50%? Like what are we crashing? We got to define that. So there's a lot of things on this depends. So will we see 10%? I don't know. Maybe. If the Fed says we're going to Volcker you and we're just going to crush the, the economy into oblivion, uh, we could see 10%. Would that affect buying a house? Well, they used to be 10%, but those times are way different than today. And uh, we've seen mass inflation since then. So it depends. Comment down below what you think. I kind of laid this out the best I possibly can. I've been through a half a cup of coffee, as you can tell, full of full of vinegar and spice. And I hope uh, this makes sense. I, I think we're gonna see short-term crazy volatility. And then it might level out somewhere. Is Dave right? I don't know. But I think he's got some bad data right now. I'll see you guys in the next video. Comment down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did my best here. See you later.